31, welcome to section 9.6. And in 9.6, we're gonna learn about the binomial theorem. So I want us, by the end of this section, to be able to evaluate binomial coefficients. I want us to take those binomial coefficients and use them in the binomial theorem to expand binomials. And then we'll find the kth term of a binomial expansion. All right, so the first thing that I gotta get us started with is what on earth is a binomial coefficient? All right, so for any non-negative integers n and r, as long as r is the smaller of the two numbers, so r is less than or equal to n, the binomial coefficient is defined as follows. And look at this formula, all right? So if we say this phrase out loud, either this symbol or this symbol, you're gonna hear me talk about n choose r. All right, so if you have n objects and you want to choose r of them, how many different combinations are there? And I'll explain what I mean in just a moment. All right, n choose r, so the c here stands for choose. All right, and this number is called the binomial coefficient in red as n choose r. All right, so let's talk about what on earth this is, is referring to. Okay, so let's pretend that I'm about to see, okay, the next movie I'm gonna go see when I'm filming this is Spider-Man Homecoming. All right, and I don't know how old this video is gonna be by the time you see it, but that's what I was gonna take a look at. All right, so let's say I bought my ticket and I have two extra tickets, all right? So I have two extra tickets but I have four friends, okay? You can already tell this is a fake example, but anyways, no, I'm kidding, I have four friends. So I wanna think about how many different ways I could give two tickets to my four friends. So let's just write these names out. So let's say we have, I could give a ticket to AJ, I could give a ticket to Maricel, I could give one to Norma, or I could give one to Rob. All right, and I want us to start counting how many different ways, how many different combinations of two people I can get from my four friends. So we'll, we'll keep a little tally here. All right, so I could take AJ and Monticel. That's one combination. I could also take AJ and Norma. All right, I could also take AJ and Rob. All right, those are three different pairings that I've made so far, but they're not my only pairings. Right? You can see I'm not done with this list. I could also take Maricel and Norma. I could take Maricel and Rob. Right? And I'm still not done, because maybe you see the last pairing here. Right? I could also take Norma and Rob. So what we're saying here is that if I had four friends and only two tickets, there are six different combinations of two people I could take. Right? There's six different pairings I can make. And that's what four choose two represents. Now if you want to do this as a formula, you're going to say it's n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. So let's play this out right here, okay? So let's say I did 4 choose 2. All right, this would be 4 factorial because n would be 4. All right, r factorial is going to be 2 factorial. Now in this case, n minus r, 4 minus 2 is also 2 factorial. And let's see what this would simplify to. So if you remember four factorial, right? We're not really excited about the number four. It actually means four times three times two times one. All right, two factorial would be two times one. Oops. And I have another factorial down there, two times one. All right, I should say I have another two factorial down there. The two factorial will cancel. 12 over two, sure enough, it's six. All right. So with that, let's practice a couple more of these binomial coefficients, and then I'll flip over to my computer and I'll show you how you can do this on your calculator. But try to do this without your calculator for right now because they really want us to get in the habit of canceling these factorials. All right, they do some pretty funky things once you get going. All right, so let's take a look at this. We have nine, choose five, all right? So if I start to work this, n is nine in this case, r is five. So I'm gonna have nine factorial in ratio to five factorial, right? N factorial over R factorial. And then we need to take the difference here, right? N minus R, so I'm gonna do nine minus five, which is four factorial, okay? Now actually, let me scoot this up just so we can see all of my work. I'll try and keep that binomial coefficient still in view. All right, so here, I'm gonna write this out. This is gonna be nine times eight times seven. Give me a sec. All right, 
So now it's a game of canceling. And I think you can see that this five factorial, the five, four, three, two, one, cancel with the five, four, three, two, one up here. So I'm gonna cancel all of those. All right, and now let's see what we have here. So I see nine, eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one. Okay, I can see the eight here is gonna get canceled with the four and the two. All right, and then if I, if I can see it, right, I have six over three, right? And I don't wanna to skip too many steps. So let me, let me go ahead and write another one. Right now I have nine times seven times six on the numerator and I have three on the denominator. All right, so if I play this out, this will cancel and leave me a two. All right, nine times seven is 63 and 63 times two, sure enough, 126. All right, so there I am running the binomial coefficient for nine choose five. All right, let's try 25 choose 25. If I was going to play this out, my n factorial is 25 factorial. Again, over 25 factorial, right? n factorial over r factorial. And then I need to do the difference, n minus r. Well, 25 minus 25 is 0. All right, now if we start to think about what cancels, the 25 factorial will cancel with the 25 factorial. And if you remember from back, I can't even remember what section it is, but a few sections ago, we talked about factorials. Zero factorial is one, so ultimately this number is just one. All right, let's try 16 choose zero. All right, let me put a little separator here. So this will be equal to n factorial over r factorial, and then I need to take the difference. So 16 minus zero is 16. And then we basically have the same situation we had over here. The 16 factorials cancel, zero factorial is one, so this is ultimately one, all right? And if you wanna try and get ahead of me, see if you can figure out D. You can always pause and then come back to it. So if I do this, this is like saying 15 choose eight. All right, it's just in slightly different notation. So this would be 15 factorial over eight factorial, and then the difference between these is seven factorial. All right, and then there's gonna be a canceling game. So, so let's see what this canceling game would look like. All right, this is gonna take me a little while to write this out. All right. And once you start to get the hang of this, I, I wouldn't actually write all of this out. Once you start to feel out, hey, these all cancel and I can see it, and good, then don't write this out. But maybe you can see, if we look at 15 factorial and eight factorial, the entire eight factorial cancel with the eight factorial that's hidden inside of 15 factorial. And then it's a matter of figuring out what cancels here. Well, I can see that I got a seven here, right? And a seven's gonna go into the 14, and I have a seven and a two, so I'm gonna cancel the seven and the two with the 14. That seems like a good pairing. I also, I can see the 15 here. The 15, I see the five and the three. So let me cancel the five and the three with the 15. And then that's, that's enough for right now. Let me clean up, see what I have. We have 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times nine. And on the denominator, I'm looking at six times four. All right, so going through this, I'm just gonna, oops, let me move this up. So we can see it. I'm just gonna scooch over to my calculator, plug this in, and see, see what I've got going on here. If I wanted to cancel the four, I really could. I could cancel, there's two twos here. I could cancel one with a 12 and one with a 10. There's a three and a two here. So I could cancel that with a, another part of the 12 and then another part of the nine. But I'm just gonna go to my calculator. So here we go, let's clear this out. We've got 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times nine. And I wanna divide that in parentheses by six times four. And it looks like I'm getting 64.35, okay? All right, so with that, I'm gonna hop over to my computer and I'm gonna show you where the binomial coefficient lives on your calculator. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang, bye. Hey Math 31, I wanna take a moment and show you how to calculate some binomial coefficients on your calculator. We just did them with the formula by hand, but your calculator can also do this. So we're gonna take a look at 15 choose eight. Um, now, my calculator is one of the older ones, 
So my symbols might look slightly different from yours if you have the new operating system. If you have the newer operating system, your calculator screen will actually look a lot like this symbol. Um, I'm not sure, maybe some of the even newer ones look like this. It just depends. Mine doesn't quite look like that. But the calculator buttons will be mostly the same. Um, so I just want to show you how you do it if you have my old operating system. So if you want to do 15 choose 8, you have to be a little proactive. Type in the 15 first and then hit your math key. And we have to get to this PRB menu. And you might say to yourself, okay, I'll just hit the right arrow key three times. It's totally allowed. Let me show you what I would have done. I've, I've told you many times I'm lazy, right? So if I hit the math key, why hit the right arrow key three times when you can just hit the left arrow key one time? Uh, uh. So once we get there, I want option three and choose R. So you can either scroll down to three and hit enter, or again, through efficiency, in my case, I like being efficient. I'm just gonna hit number three. All right, and then I need 15, choose eight. If I hit enter, there you go, 6,435. Same number we got when we did it by hand. Um, I know we did 16, choose zero. We, we know that's one, but I want you to just see this on your calculator. I hit 16, I hit the math button, go to the left, option three, tell it zero. So I'm doing 16, choose zero, All right? They're trying to say the N is 16 and the R is zero. I hit enter and there you go. All right, so with that, that's all there is to calculating the binomial coefficients on your calculator. All right, thanks so much, gang. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.